Have you ever wondered how the concept of witches, those mystical beings associated with magic and the supernatural, came to be? Our journey takes us back to the early roots of witchcraft, deeply intertwined with the pagan religions and belief systems that once dominated the world. The concept of witches wasn't always tied to malevolence or fear. In fact, the opposite was often true. In the ancient civilizations of Egypt and Greece, witches were revered figures. They were seen as healers, seers and wise women who could commune with the divine and the natural world. The magic they practiced was a craft, a skill passed down through generations, a sacred bond between the spiritual and the earthly realms. Witchcraft was not a source of evil but a tool for understanding the world, a lens through which these ancient societies could interpret the mysteries of life and death. As we move forward in time, the perception of witches began to shift dramatically. The Middle Ages brought about a significant change in the way witches were viewed. As Christianity began to rise in Europe, a stark shift in perception occurred. Witchcraft, once seen as a benign, even helpful practice, became demonized and feared. The lines between pagan beliefs and Christian doctrine blurred, and a new narrative emerged, one that painted witches as malevolent beings in league with the devil himself. The church, seeking to consolidate its power and eliminate any threats, played a key role in this transformation. The concept of witch hunts and trials was born, a terrifying and ruthless pursuit of those suspected of practicing witchcraft. The objective was not only to punish the alleged witches, but also to deter others from straying from the path of righteousness. One of the most infamous examples of this is the Inquisition. Initially intended to combat heresy, the Inquisition quickly became a tool for hunting witches. Inquisitors, armed with a zealous belief in their holy duty, scoured the land for signs of witchcraft, leaving destruction in their wake. In the late 15th century, the Malleus Maleficarum, or Hammer of Witches, was published. This guidebook for witch hunters, written by Heinrich Kramer, an inquisitor of the Catholic Church, served as a manual for identifying, interrogating and executing witches. It widely propagated the belief that witches were evil creatures who had renounced God to serve the devil, further fueling the hysteria and fear. This period marked the height of the witch hunts, but it also laid the groundwork for the trials and persecutions that would follow in the centuries to come. The Middle Ages, with its fear-driven witch hunts and trials, became a dark chapter in the history of witches. It was a time when fear outweighed reason, and the innocent often paid the price. And yet, as grim as this era was, it was only the beginning. The witch hunts would continue, growing even more brutal and widespread. This period marked a dark chapter in the history of witches, but the worst was yet to come. The 16th and 17th centuries witnessed an unprecedented wave of witch trials across Europe and the New World. The Salem Witch Trials, held in Massachusetts between 1692 and 1693, stand as one of the most infamous examples of this hysteria. A small group of girls in Salem Village claimed to be possessed by the devil, accusing several local women of witchcraft. This ignited a wave of fear and superstition that swept through the village, leading to the execution of 20 people and the imprisonment of around 200 more. Across the Atlantic, similar scenes were playing out. Europe was in the throes of the Great Witch Craze. In Germany, the infamous Bamberg and Würzburg witch trials saw hundreds meet their end at the stake. In Scotland, the North Berwick witch trials led to around 70 people being accused of conspiring with the devil to bring down King James VI. These trials were fueled by a potent mix of superstition, fear and religious fervour. Witch hunts became a tool for social control, a way to deal with societal anxieties and fears. The majority of those accused and executed were women, often those who did not conform to societal norms or were in vulnerable positions. It's hard to pin down an exact number, but it's estimated that tens of thousands of people were executed for witchcraft during this period. Some estimates even suggest it could be in the hundreds of thousands. It was a time of mass hysteria and paranoia, where an accusation could lead to a death sentence. But it wasn't just the accused who suffered. Communities were torn apart, families were destroyed, and the social fabric of entire towns was irrevocably damaged. The legacy of these trials is still felt today, a stark reminder of the power of fear and superstition. These trials marked a peak in witch persecution, but they also sparked a turning point. As the Age of Enlightenment dawned, so did a new perspective on witches and witchcraft. 
This period, spanning the 17th and 18th centuries, brought about a seismic shift in the way society viewed the world. The rise of science, rational thought, and skepticism began to challenge the centuries-old superstitions and fears. The Enlightenment, often referred to as the Age of Reason, was a time of intellectual and philosophical advancement. It was an era where thinkers, philosophers and scientists began to question long-held beliefs and societal norms. The fear and hysteria that once fueled the witch hunts began to wane as individuals, such as Voltaire and Thomas Hobbes, championed reason over superstition. They argued against the irrationality of witch hunts, condemning them as a product of fear and ignorance. During this period there was a significant shift in the legal perspective as well. Many countries started to decriminalize witchcraft, marking a significant turning point in history. England, for instance, passed the Witchcraft Act of 1735, which dismissed witchcraft as mere illusion and deception rather than a crime punishable by death. This act was a powerful testament to the changing attitudes towards witchcraft and signaled the end of the witch hunts. However, the end of the witch hunts did not mean the end of witches. In fact, many of the practices associated with witchcraft, such as herbalism and midwifery, continued to thrive. These practices, once condemned and feared, began to be understood and appreciated for their true worth. They became part of the fabric of society, a testament to the resilience of those who were once persecuted. The Enlightenment brought about a much-needed change in perspective, allowing society to move away from fear and superstition. It marked the end of an era of persecution and fear, paving the way for understanding and acceptance. While this marked the end of an era, the legacy of witches lived on. In the modern world, witches have undergone yet another transformation. As we entered the 20th century, witchcraft experienced a resurgence unlike any other period in history. This time, however, the narrative was different. No longer were witches the feared outcasts, the scapegoats of societies steeped in superstition. Instead, they became symbols of empowerment, particularly within the feminist and environmentalist movements. Feminism found resonance in the witchcraft narrative. The witches of yore, often women singled out for their independence or non-conformity, were reimagined as feminist icons. Women began to reclaim witchcraft, not as a mark of evil, but as a symbol of female strength and resistance against patriarchal structures. Witchcraft became a tool for personal empowerment and spiritual exploration, a path to self-discovery and healing. Parallel to this, the environmentalist movement also found an ally in witchcraft. The witch's deep connection to nature, her role as a healer and guardian of the earth, resonated with those advocating for environmental conservation. Modern witchcraft practices often emphasize a respect for nature and promote sustainable living. And let's not forget the influence of popular culture. From the enchanting Hogwarts witches of Harry Potter to the empowered Halliwell sisters of Charmed, witches have become positive figures in literature, film and television. This positive portrayal has further helped to destigmatize the term witch and allowed for a wider acceptance of witchcraft in society. Contemporary witchcraft is a broad spectrum, encompassing practices like Wicca, pagan rituals, herbalism, and even modern-day spellcasting. It's less about broomsticks and cauldrons, and more about spirituality, self-empowerment, and a deep connection to the natural world. So from the misunderstood and maligned figures of the past to the empowered symbols of the present, witches have indeed come a long way. Their narrative, fraught with persecution and fear, has evolved into one of empowerment and acceptance. From feared outcasts to symbols of empowerment, the journey of witches through history is indeed a fascinating one. So what can we learn from the dark history of witches and their persecution? From the mysterious origins of witchcraft, the societal fear and prejudice that fueled the medieval perspective, to the horrific witch trials, we've journeyed through centuries of history. These periods vividly illustrate how fear can stoke the flames of misunderstanding and intolerance. As we moved into the era of enlightenment, the end of witch hunts came not from a decrease in fear, but from an increase in critical thinking and rationality. This shift in perception, driven by education and understanding, halted the violent persecution of those deemed as witches. In modern times, we've seen a resurgence of interest in witches and witchcraft, yet with a different lens. This fascination, far from being rooted in fear, is often about empowerment, mysticism, 
and a connection to nature. As we look back on the history of witches, we are reminded of the power of fear, the importance of critical thinking, and the enduring human fascination with the unknown. Music